Okay, I'm down in this ravine here uh, cutting up a small fir tree. It's like maybe an 8 or 10 inch tree and I just needed to thin it out because it was crowding some other trees and whatever usual reasons I cut down trees. I don't just randomly cut down trees. It's something I don't ever talk about because I think that I'm, I'm thinking that it's just self-evident to anyone that you don't just run around cutting down anything. Uh, but I know it's actually not, so I'll talk about that sometime and uh, kind of my forestry goals and why I choose to cut down certain trees. Anyway, I was cutting this down and I had to stop working because I got so much pitch on my hands from these pitch blisters. Now the main trunk doesn't have that many, but up here on the upper portions of the tree that are younger with the smooth bark, there's lots and lots of these pitch blisters. And they're just, each one's just full of a big gob of wet, really wet, sticky pitch. All this pitch is very, very sticky and very wet and my hands are coated. So the reason I had to stop working is because if I grab the ax, um, the handle and my hands are so sticky that I have to unstick my hand, you know, every time even I take a swing, right? So normally I, I grab it up here and then I'm ready to swing and my hand just slides. Well, it's, it's kind of catching on the way down and, and if I grab it all hard here, um, without just kind of barely touching it, then my hand sticks to it. So if I just take a simple chop, look at this, I have to unstick my fingers and basically pull my hand off of the ax. It's actually gotten a little bit better because I stopped a little while ago. So I had to stop working because it was unsafe and just slow and, and irritating. So I'm going to show you how to get this stuff off of your hands. I've used alcohol, citrus solve, but I think the best thing I've found is fat. I've used all kinds of fat. I've used olive oil. I've used coconut oil. I've used, this is lard from my hog last year, Penelope, which some of you will remember. Um, I originally learned this from Tom and Nancy Orr, who uh, I believe Tom was on a TV show about mountain men. Um, the Mountain Men? I don't know what it's called. I actually haven't seen it. Anyway, I uh, love those guys. They're friends of mine from way back and they kind of took me and my wife at the time and uh, <clears throat> some friends under their wing in northern Montana when we were traveling one summer. Uh, great, great people. And they taught me how to do this with bear fat. But I found that pretty much any fat works. So all I do is smear the stuff on my hands and then wait for a while. So yeah, it turns out that pitch is fat soluble. So it needs a little bit of time to work. It's not super fast, but usually what I'll do is just put on a light coat like this. And if I want to do anything, I just try to avoid doing things like if I don't want to get fat on stuff I'm touching or I'll wipe some of it off and just leave a really thin coat after, you know, maybe this long where the pitch has started to soften and I can just remove most of the fat and then kind of go about my business. But yeah, it takes a little time to work, but it just works really well. And think of your alternatives. Obviously, gasoline and turpentine are unpreferable to rub all over your skin. I think in the future, I'm actually going to start carrying a little, some kind of little tin of fat for this because I cut a lot of this young fir. You know, I'm cutting a lot of small trees just because that's kind of what needs to get cut mostly. And it's real practical. Like trees this size, about eight inches and down, are just really practical for putting up for firewood with an ax because um, they're easy to work with. So you can see I got most of it off already. Uh, most of the things I do around during the day, I could just leave it at this and the rest will wear off by the end of the day. Um, or I could le obviously leave it on longer. Usually I'll leave it on for 10 or 15 minutes and almost everything will come off. And it gets on your handles too. And you can do the same thing if you want to, but usually this really sticky pitch will dry pretty fast so even by the next day it might have started to toughen up a little bit and you know with this a little bit of oil on my hands this is not a problem at all and i just kind of see it as extra treatment for your handle it's just like another coating of resiny stuff that's going to you know improve the seal on your handle so if you see people's axes that look like this uh, and they have all these dark blotches all over them that's usually pitch so I think I'll get a first aid kit together and include a little bit of fat in there, just a little little tiny tin or something to, to clean up my hands uh, while I'm working, so I, just so I can keep working without going back to the house because I work with this pitchy fur a lot. Um, it's my least favorite, you know, out, out of all the woods I've chopped here, fur is definitely my least favorite. It's stringy and kind of spongy 
All the hardwoods cut nicer here. You know, under just the right circumstances on some parts of the tree, the ax will cut in deeper, but overall, I, I don't know that I would say it's easier. Um, most of the hardwoods cut cleaner, they throw cleaner chips, and they're not sticky. So yeah, I don't really like working with fur, but I just, work, I just cut what needs to be cut and, and deal with it. I don't, need to, I don't mean to whine. <laughs> okay, that's that. Um, hopefully this video turned out because I've been wanting to share this with you guys. It's a great tip I picked up from Tom and Nancy those many years back that has served me very well and that I never really see anyone else putting out there. Um, I don't know if a lot of maybe people don't know about it or or what, but now um, you know a few hundred of you at least know about it. Hey, one more quick thing. I do this a lot too. Again, working with this pitchy stuff, it gets on my axe as well. So, you know, if there's a lot on the handle and you don't want it on there, I have put it before on the handle, like say here, let's say I don't want that, which which I don't care actually, but I put a little on there, but um, there's usually a lot of it on the head. And sometimes it's, it's quite thick on there. So I'll put it on there too. Basically, I just put it on the head like this and then put the head, put the axe away. So I'll just leave it, and then when I go to use my axe next time, I'll take the sheath off and just wipe all that fat off and all the pitch comes off with it. And that's, that's an easy way to maintain um, your axe without getting like a ton of pitch on it. If anything, it'll just oil it up and make it, you know, cut that much better for a few strokes. Which... Um, yeah, that's it. I've been playing with this axe. This is the Council Tool Boys Axe. It's under $40. I think I got it for $36.80 shipped to my door. The balance is pretty good as you can see. Um, ideally it would hang just exactly level like this, but it's pretty close uh, for... It's, it, this is better than your average axe, uh, single bit axe. Uh, the handle comes relatively thin already. I thinned it a lot. You can see it's quite thin. Um, I took some off this way and quite a lot off this way and also some here. Uh, I have some complaints. I changed this a little bit right here to, to make it more suitable for me. It's advertised as 28, but it's actually 27, but it's very comfortable to use. It has an aluminum wedge, <clears throat> which um, I dislike. And here's why, because you can't cross wedge it. Like you can't drive a wedge through the wedge. If it was a wooden wedge, you could wedge the ax this way with metal wedges as needed. And guess what? I needed already. Um, you know, pretty much out of the box, it was starting to come loose already. I mean, it seems pretty well hung and pretty tight on there, but clearly it wasn't tight enough. So that means that I have to drive wedges in alongside this wedge. I tried to get this out. You can see it's kind of mangled here. I tried to get that out uh, with a chisel to like kind of pry it out. No go, because if it was steel, I could do it. I could get a cold chisel in there and, and cut kind of a notch in the corner and then pop, kind of start popping it and driving it out. But since it's aluminum, the chisel just keeps cutting through the aluminum. So I drove a metal wedge in here and that basically tilted the head like that, which I never even thought would, would happen. I've never seen that happen before. And so now I either have to take that out and try to get the aluminum wedge out again, or I have to drive a metal wedge on this side and hope it pushes the head back. Um, so yeah, if Council Tools listening, which I'm sure they're not, um, put in wood wedges because this is just not user serviceable, basically. So I'm looking at having to drill parts of this wedge out and go through, I don't, I'm not even sure what, to get try to get this metal wedge out of here. And um, that's no fun. Uh, quite a bit of grinding was necessary. I guess it's cutting pretty good. I ground it um, a la Kreps, and I think Kephart too mentions this, of uh, putting the thickest part of the ax right back here behind the edge, but one third from this corner down, so right about here. And I don't know, verdict's still out on that. It's hollow ground back here. The grind was super rough. I mean, I probably spent over an hour filing on this thing, um, which is okay, but I'm not sure. It has a limited potential because a lot of material has been ground out right in this area. 
So I don't know, I'm still figuring that out. Um, but so far, overall, I, you know, I don't mean to see, sound too negative, I actually like it quite a bit. Uh, it aims well, it chops pretty well right out of the box, and it didn't have this ridiculous thick handle that everything ha has. The handle is very high quality, very nice, uh, dense, white hickory. Uh, no complaints there, really. Again, I thinned it a little bit, but I, I think the way it came was just fine, too. Seems fine, it's holding the edge fine and all that so yeah anyway yeah i could have been sitting here talking with that pitch on my that fat still on my hands in fact it still is i you know i think it's still working because there's like a little bit on there but even that short amount of time i was what was it like two or three minutes before i wiped it off that got almost everything off as you can see so yeah.